Hi, I'm Niklas Alin. This is the Neckball Dev Blog. Today, I'm going to talk about a sort of game design conceptual tool that I'm on the verge of formalizing. It's like, it's very helpful for me in some cases, but I don't know how like practical it actually is. So what you do is uh, you write down every feature or mechanic or whatever of your game uh, horizontally, and then you write them all down again vertically. And now you have a matrix, right? So now it's just a matter of systematically going through each and every square and see what happens when those two features are combined. Sometimes the result will be really, really obvious, like a key and a locked door, for instance. No prizes for guessing how you can use those two together. And then sometimes you get really nonsensical, like, I don't know, a peanut in a treasure chest or something. But in many cases, you are going to end up with a really unexpected combination that you perhaps can do something interesting with. A lever and a pushable box, for instance. What happens if you put the lever on top of the box and make a puzzle where you have to move the lever around in different, to different locations? Or a key and a moving platform. Can you place a key on top of the platform and then slide the whole thing under a low ceiling so that the key is scraped off? The idea is to find a situation to put in your game for every single square in the matrix. And maybe you can set it up a bit differently. Let's say you write down the names of a lot of creatures here and then a bunch of actions here. So what happens if you shoot an orc? Well, you can probably guess. What happens if you stab the orc? Well, probably something. Okay, what happens if you kiss the orc? Does that do anything? If you have kissing as a feature of your game, probably it should. Does the orc like being kissed? And let's add a locked door. Can you maybe shoot or stab the door to open it? So what if you try to kiss it? If kissing is an option, someone will try it and then something gotta happen. Now I predict that actually typing out a matrix like this for an entire game project is going to be much more work than it's worth it. Already in the elephant game this is a monumental task if I really want to fit everything on there. But I will say that many of my most interesting puzzles have been invented in this way by trying to combine uh, things that seem so far-fetched. Flamethrower and a moving platform? I have something for that. Water wheel and a pinwheel? I have something for that. A key and a stick of dynamite? I have something for that too. Furthermore, this can be a good uh, system to predict bizarre stuff that can happen in your interconnected system of mechanics and make sure that the game does not break when they happen. With that, let's head to the Wednesday's report. Most excitedly, I have started working on the boss for the robot dungeon. It is the second out of three bosses in the game and it's a big steam engine puppy dog. So far I've only been creating the 3D model and played around with animations, but I have a good feeling about this boss because you won't actually kill it. All you need to do is find a way to get it to let you pass. That is all for today's episode, but stay tuned for next week when I will be back. If you want to subscribe to this devblog series, you can do so on Patreon or directly on YouTube. And you can follow me on Twitter for a quick update. Thank you, and I will see you next time.